It's 2021, and we are watching our world burn. Literally. Our fossil fuel intensive lifestyles increasing global temperatures, which is leading to changes in our hydrologic systems and atmospheric circulation. The altered conditions will continue to amplify temperature extremes, drought, flooding, and storms. And the consequences of climate change are not only detrimental to ecosystems, but also jeopardize infrastructure, agricultural production, clean water access, energy access, and human health, disproportionately affecting low-income communities and people of color. This is the future that my generation and generations to come have been dealt. And if actions aren't taken now to change the course that we're headed, we will have to live with the irreversible damage. And that's not a fate I'm ready to accept. Fortunately, there is hope on the horizon. Renewable technologies such as onshore wind turbines and photovoltaic solar arrays are well-established solutions that can decarbonize our energy sector and work toward mitigating climate change. So far, hundreds of local governments and almost 15 states have committed to powering their communities with 100% renewable energy. The aspiration for a zero emission grid has even been discussed at the national level. Unfortunately, there are many challenges that still need to be understood and addressed to bring this goal to fruition. One of increasing importance that I'm going to shed light on today is a lack of support from most communities. Research has shown that wind and solar energy are accepted by the public in theory, but encounter project impeding resistance during development. States all over the US have experienced postponements or cancellations of renewable energy projects due to public opposition. This discrepancy between high support for renewable energy in a general sense and a low support for renewable energy on the ground is described as the social gap. There's evidence that suggests that the social gap results from project proposal, proposals failing to meet people's conditions for acceptable development, which usually entail context-specific measures that limit impacts on the local residents and environment. Incompatible project proposals can be linked back to the reliance on conventional public processes that tend to put the community members in the backseat of decision-making not allowing them to tailor the project to meet their qualifications. Instead, the process typically involves government officials working on the sidelines with renewable energy developers to make a decision, announce it to the public, and then defend any criticisms that come forward. Community members can get frustrated by this approach because there's no real opportunity to contribute. By the time they are invited to get involved, the decision has already been made. And more often than not, it's an outcome that is best suited for the officials and developers and less so for the public. This decide, announce, defend model is a manifestation of hierarchical decision making that superficially permits public input. Citizens that are unable to meaningfully participate in the public process may take drastic measures such as protests, petitions, or even legal actions to get their voice heard. Not only is this unproductive because it can derail progress towards a clean energy future, but it can also cause community division and distrust in leaders. The thing is, it doesn't have to be this way. Most decision makers just follow this format because it's the minimum they have to do to involve the public according to the law. But they can and should do more. The public process needs to be revamped to put the community members in the driver's seat so that they can set the bar for the type of renewable development that they prefer or are at least willing to live with. Gratiot County, Michigan has turned this idea into reality. In the summer of 2012, 133 wind turbines went online in the county, spanning over 30,000 acres of agricultural land. Though the Gratiot County Wind Farm is the largest wind farm in Michigan to date, it is also one of the most highly supported projects in the state. The story of Gratiot County starts and ends in collaboration. Ever since the 1970s, Gratiot County has engaged residents, businesses, and municipalities to come together and efficiently plan strategies to promote economic development. 
The 2008 recession hit the area particularly hard, which had the county scrambling to find ways to improve the local economy. At the same time, the wind industry in the U.S. was booming. Seeing a potential opportunity, county officials reverted to their collaborative roots to start a conversation with the greater community to see if and how wind energy could fit in Gratiot. As this idea was considered, consultants were brought in to provide people with as much information as possible to clarify unknowns or resolve misunderstandings about wind energy. The community expressed interest in potentially having a wind farm in the area, but not unconditionally. The government officials were cognizant of this as they moved forward in creating a wind zoning ordinance, making the process fully transparent to identify and accommodate any public concerns. Widespread notices for the ordinance meetings were made through newspapers, radio, and the internet. Plus, the county leveraged its connections with the townships and chamber of commerce to further spread the word. This widely disseminated information grabbed people's attention and resulted in 300 or more citizens showing up at any one of the 20 plus meetings. Each one of these individuals was given the opportunity to help craft the wind ordinance. Participants self-organized into groups on topics that they cared about and were responsible for coming up with recommendations. The products of this were the driving influence for what the Executive Committee of Planning turned into a legitimate zoning ordinance. And not long after the ordinance was finalized, the aforementioned Gratia County Wind Farm was proposed and unanimously approved by the four townships it spanned. Continuing in the spirit of community engagement, every resident in the project area was presented the chance to partake in a pooling easement, which pretty much granted participants a lease payment, even if they did not host a wind turbine on their property. This initiative was well received with 250 families volunteering to sign up. Needless to say, the launching of Gratiot County's first wind farm was a huge success. Wind energy has become a part of the community's pride ever since. So much so that there has been a welcome expansion of even more wind farms over time. Currently, Gratiot County has 345 wind turbines and county. Now, the actions of this rural Michigan community offer three key lessons about how to implement an effective public process. First is start early. In this case, people were encouraged to actively participate in the creation of the wind zoning ordinance. Setting the regulations for wind development is the earliest part of the decision-making process. And this is where citizens need to be heavily involved because at this stage, citizens can affect change. Allowing the community to essentially reflect their conditions for renewable energy development into the rule of the land is the best way to send a clear message to developers about exactly what kind of projects the community will accept. Not only does this practice safeguard the community from ill-suited projects, but it also prevents developers from wasting time and resources on a proposal that may be a lost cause. Second is get participants. In Gratia County, there were hundreds of people that were engaged early on. The more voices at the table, the more perspectives that can be considered in the decision making, which can lead to better outcomes. The high volume of participants was a result of government officials doing more than just the legal requirements for public notice. They broadcast opportunities for involvement through every avenue that they knew how. This increased awareness raising helped increase attendance. Government officials that are willing to get creative and go beyond the business as usual methods will likely have a better turnout. And third, empower the community. Gratia County leaders put the public in charge from the get-go. Citizens had decision-making roles of their choosing that allowed them to shape elements of the wind ordinance. Not only did they have ownership of those decisions, but they also had a physical sense of ownership by signing up for the pooling easement. People who have some sort of personal tie to a project are more likely to want to see it succeed. Not to mention that the main critique of the standard public meeting format is that the public can provide input, but nothing is meaningfully done with it. So instead, giving people a voice and acting on it can make all the difference for how the community perceives the project outcomes as well as the local leaders. Now, just to be clear, the use of collaborative public processes may have little effect on those who are ideologically opposed to renewable energy. 
Instead, these processes can help proactively identify people's pre-existing notions of good energy projects and avoid finding out the hard way what people won't tolerate. Gratiot County demonstrates a shining example of how to make the most out of the public process by shifting away from the mindset of what do I have to do toward what is going to work. And what works for community engagement and renewable energy siting must be explored and taught by academics, supported by the politicians, implemented by practitioners, and demanded by the public. In doing so, we will no longer be just spectators of climate change, but rather we'll be the ones putting out the fire. Thank you.